Pacific island nation of Tonga suffered significant damage in Saturday's volcanic eruption. The largest underwater volcano, presently the deadliest volcano hiding in the Pacific Ocean, has violently cracked open the Earth. Scientists speculate that the sheer ferocity of this massive eruption poses a catastrophic and far-reaching consequence that far surpasses the extent of destruction of any land volcano. Working over time to estimate the possible magnitude of the eruption and seeking ways to prevent an impending disaster, scientists are left with two questions, how massive would this eruption be, and how drastic could its impact be? In today's video, we will unravel the details, discussing the changes and possible impact of this appalling volcano. The ashfall has been significant, and the tsunami waves have been destructive, but we don't know the extent of the damage. Tonga's capital, Nuku'alofa, is covered in a thick film of volcanic dust. This is because the largest underwater volcano in the world is on the verge of erupting. The risk of a sudden eruption has just increased by 360%. This means that it has the volcanic explosivity index of six eruptions, and it would be the most disastrous eruption seen since Krakatoa in the 19th century. It has the potential to destroy the entire world. Massive volcanic activities were considered a thing of the past because major eruptions were easily contained, but recent eruptions have shaken everyone to their core. The Hungatanga Hunga Haapai volcano is one of the most active and deadly volcanoes in the South Pacific. This underwater volcano resides along the Kermatic Tonga Ridge, a dynamic geological feature formed by the convergence of the Pacific Plate and the Indo Australian Plate. This convergence of these plates forms a long chain of islands and volcanoes, creating a vast area existing under the ocean surface. Its predominantly submerged state characterizes Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai. Only two small volcanic islands, Hunga Tonga and Hunga Haapai, are above the waterline as silent markers of the volcanic activity. Below, these islands stand as the remnants of the once formidable calderas, northern and western boundaries. The physical dimensions of these volcanoes are nothing short of remarkable. Its base spans a considerable 20 kilometers in diameter, extending across the seafloor. From this expansive foundation, the volcano reaches a height of approximately 2,000 m towards the ocean surface. For decades, the volcano's caldera lay approximately 490 feet below sea level, measuring 2.5 m in length and a mile in width. The deposits from previous volcanic eruptions have shaped its landscape, filling the caldera's northern and southern portions with proof of eruptions dating back to 11.8 CE. But now, the volcano's risk of sudden eruption has just increased, all because the 2021-2022 eruptions were much bigger and more powerful than anyone could have imagined. Before discussing the possible impact of the Hungatanga eruption, let's take a moment to talk about some of the most catastrophic volcanoes that have ever erupted. On December 20, 2021, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano erupted. This eruption was so strong that it made a huge ash cloud that people as far as Nuku'alofa could see clearly. This eruption was unprecedented, catching the whole world unaware. The Volcanic Ash Advisory Center in Wellington had to quickly warn airlines on passing that route because of the volcanic activities. The eruption was so powerful that people could hear explosions from 110 miles away, and it continued raging until about 2 a.m. on December 21. After this first eruption, satellite pictures on December 25 showed that the island had gotten bigger, which was expected since it happened from other eruptions in the past. The volcano gradually became less active, and on January 11, they said it was dormant. But that was just the beginning. On January 14, the volcano woke up and sent ash 12 miles into the air. The next day, a strong eruption was stronger than the one on December 20. This time, the ash cloud went up an amazing 36 miles, setting a record for how high a vapor plume from a volcano can go. The December 20, 2021, eruption had a big and widespread impact. People could hear the boom in Tonga, Fiji, New Zealand, Australia, and Alaska, 6,200 miles away from the eruption site. The shockwaves were even felt in the United Kingdom. The eruption could be said to be more powerful than a nuclear explosion. A study by Sam Perkins said that the explosion size was like the force of a hydrogen bomb. This study used satellite data, field observations, and drone mapping to study the volcano's impact. It then made a simulation that showed the eruption and how it caused unbelievable tsunami waves. These tsunami waves were as high as 148 feet on Tonga's Tafua Island and 56 feet on Tongatapu. 
The volcano released water vapor equal to 58,000 swimming pools, which would likely have affected the planet's climate and caused temporary global warming in the future. The eruption did set the record for the highest volcano plume. It projected ash 36 miles into the atmosphere. It also created atmospheric waves that circled the globe at 720 miles per hour. After the eruption, researchers saw the damage, confirming the study's findings. The landscape showed the eruption's power with downed trees and vegetation along the coast. On January 15, the eruption had different events from small to explosive. Witnesses heard two initial blasts and two louder booms that caused the first damaging tsunami waves. The fifth blast was the most powerful, like the biggest nuclear tests by the United States. It displaced seawater, forming a huge local tsunami in the blast center. A minute after the blast, the wave was 85 m high as it reached Tonga's Tofua Island. It was still 45 m tall, but experts think it might be more. The study found that shallower waters along the shore helped lessen the tsunami's power. The tsunami's energy decreased as it moved along the seafloor. How drastic was the impact of this eruption? There is limited information about how much damage and how many people were affected in Tonga by the eruption because an undersea cable was damaged. Broadcasting channel Sky News reported with videos that waves were hitting Tonga's coastal areas. Atata, a small island near the capital, was reportedly submerged underwater and rescue operations were made. Most of the island was wiped out and there were reports of residents struggling to breathe due to ash. The New Zealand Defence Force called the damage catastrophic. The beautiful Mango Island was left in ruins, its once majestic structures reduced to rubble. The neighboring Nuku Island also suffered significant damage, while Fanua Island was left with only two buildings still standing. The west coast of Tangatapa was hit hard, with 21 homes destroyed and 35 more severely damaged. The eruption ravaged the waterfront of Nuku Alofa, with reports of missing individuals adding to the devastation. As relief efforts were sent to the region, the true extent of the damage in Tonga was still unknown. The eruption had caused severe damage to the Tonga cable system, disrupting communication and hindering rescue efforts. Repair crews faced numerous challenges due to the ongoing volcanic activity, and it wasn't until later that limited satellite connectivity was established. A cable repair ship arrived in Tonga on January 30, and the tireless crew worked until February 22 to repair the damaged cable. The eruption's impact was not limited to Tonga. Other regions such as Fiji, Japan, Hawaii, and Peru also experienced casualties, material damage, and an oil spill. The disruption of flights in the surrounding region due to volcanic ash added to the chaos and devastation caused by this natural disaster. The World Bank estimated the total damage in Tonga at a staggering $90.4 million, significantly impacting the country's GDP, accounting for 18.55% of its total. The global fallout for this massive eruption happened because water got into the volcano's hot magma, causing a steam eruption. At first, four blasts broke the rocks, letting a lot of water into the magma chamber. Though the study could not state the main cause of the volcano, scientists think that a magma hammer effect caused it. The magma possibly had turbulence and was moving up and down like a hammer, causing the eruption. The seismic record also showed a strange pressure drop during the eruption, which is not typical for this to happen in volcanic eruptions. The eruption began in December, and because the exact cause is known, Sam Perkins said these volcanoes are unpredictable. They can suddenly become active as magma moves through their pathways, and anything can happen in those pathways. Dan Slayback, who helped with the study, also mentioned how surprising it is for volcanic activity as big as this to happen suddenly with almost no warning. There were smaller eruptions before January 15, but scientists were not expecting the following eruption. Its size surprised everyone. Slayback stated that it was probably a 1 in 500 year event for the region, maybe even the whole world. The study on the 2021 to 2022 eruption said that the eruption could have endangered more people without the quick response from the local community and tourists that helped migrate people. The eruptions would go down in history like Krakatoa, the most destructive eruption in modern man's history. The 1883 Krakatoa eruption happened between the Java and Sumatra Islands in Indonesia. Krakatoa is a stratovolcano, this type of volcano is built up by the accumulation and collapse of layers of lava, ash, and other stuff from eruptions over time. This formation makes them look different from other volcanoes. Before the huge 1883 explosion, Krakatoa had smaller eruptions and trembles, indicating it was active. Volcanoes activate whenever hot liquid magma moves under the Earth's surface. 
As magma moves up, it can break rocks and make waves in the ground, which we can measure with seismographs. For Krakatoa, the waves told experts that this magma was pushing towards the surface, and by August 1883, the pressure inside the volcano had reached a critical point. The volcano erupted on May 20, 1883. It is one of the strongest and most destructive volcanic activities ever recorded. It lasted until October 21, 1883. Its kind of eruption is called a Plinian eruption, and it is famous for making a tall column of ash and gases. The eruption was so big that the island collapsed and caused huge tsunamis. The death toll was estimated to be between 36,417 and 120,000. The island where Krakatoa was is now a big hole in the sea. Over time, a new island grew, filling the hole that was initially made. This was caused by new volcanic activities underwater. This new island is called Anna Krakatoa, a child of Krakatoa. Anna Krakatoa is still an active volcano today. Given how massive the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano eruption would likely be, you are wondering if it would be the last time the volcano erupts? Well, not exactly. Even though the eruptions in 2021 and 2022 seemed sudden, the volcano wasn't completely inactive. This volcano is known for being very unpredictable and has shown signs of activity before. From 2014 to 2015, there was an eruption under the sea in this area, and it was a big deal for the ongoing geological processes that shaped the Pacific region. The eruption happened from mid-2014 to January 2015. Since it was under the sea, it occurred beneath the ocean surface, so what we saw on the surface was just a small part of what was happening underwater. The volcanic activity led to the buildup of volcanic materials, slowly creating a new landmass that eventually broke through the ocean surface, forming the visible island near Hungatanga. The Hungatanga Hunga Haapai volcano is in the same league as the stratovolcanoes, shield, and cinder cone volcanoes. How destructive can these volcanoes be? The shield volcanoes are like the gentle giants of volcanoes. They look different from other types and have wide, low shapes. Instead of explosive eruptions, they mainly have fluid lava that flows easily, creating broad slopes. The Hawaiian Islands have famous shield volcanoes like Mauna Loa and Kilauea, which have been shaping the landscape for a long time. But in 2018, Kilauea had a huge and unexpected eruption. It was a fissure eruption, with cracks opening up in the ground. The eruption destroyed homes, buried neighborhoods in lava, and changed lives. It lasted from May 3 to August 6, 2018, causing major damage. This eruption surprised scientists because it was so unexpected. The lava, ash, and sulfur dioxide released showed how volatile and dangerous it was. NASA and other satellites helped provide important information about the eruption, and it became a chance to test tools that estimate lava flow and volume, important things for understanding volcanoes, especially since they hadn't been fully tested before. Conversely, cinder cone volcanoes are smaller but potent members of the volcanic family with unique features. These steep, cone-shaped mountains result from explosive eruptions driven by the release of gas and ash. Unlike shield volcanoes, cinder cone volcanoes have a more distinct cone-like shape. Despite not being very tall, their name comes from small lava fragments thrown into the air during eruptions. These bits quickly cool in the air and fall back to the ground, creating loose cinder-like rocks around the volcano's base. Although smaller than shield or stratovolcanoes, cinder cone volcanoes can erupt forcefully, sending ash and debris high into the atmosphere. Their eruptions can be visually stunning, creating ash plumes that immediately impact their surroundings. A well-known cinder cone volcano is Paracutan in Mexico, which gained global recognition for its unique growth. It emerged from a cornfield in just nine years, eventually covering the town of San Juan Parangaracutiro with layers of lava. The eruption of Paracutan shows how volcanic behavior can change dramatically, revealing that these volcanoes can suddenly unleash their destructive power. But then there are the stratovolcanoes, known for their towering heights, steep slopes, and distinct composition with alternating layers of lava, ash, and other volcanic materials. Stratovolcanoes, nicknamed for their cake-like layers, tell a fascinating story about Earth's history. These unique structures, seen in volcanoes like Mount St. Helens and Mount Fuji, look cool and give us crucial clues about their past and the dangers they might pose.